expressions, uh, row values, recursive common table expressions, and that sort of thing. On the website, we've got examples of, of what we call um, um, outlandish query examples. There's uh, about 10 lines of SQL, and you can paste it into SQLite, and it will compute the Mandelbrot set for you, for example. It's pretty amazing. Now, and, and, and the query planner uh, is, is very sophisticated, and it's on par with the big client server databases out there. It, we do a lot of very sophisticated query planning. One, where, one place where SQLite really is live, though, is inside the resource <coughs> usage. The footprint for the library, when compiled uh, for size, is less than a half megabyte. So SQLite is also very fast. A few years ago, we did a, a comparison of loading uh, uh, thumbnails uh, either out of, out of blobs in an SQLite database or reading them as separate files off the file system. And so uh, you, there's, a, there's a link there where you can go read more about this and actually download the code and try it yourself. But this shows the ratio. And so where it's green, that means that SQLite is faster than the file system. So for, for thumbnails or other objects that are less than about 50 k, uh, 50 k it's faster to read them out of an SQLite database than it is to read them off the disk. And you think, well, how is that possible? Because the database is itself a file on disk. How is it possible they can read it faster than just reading it straight off the disk? Well, the answer is that when you're reading a bunch of, of thumbnails off the disk, you have to call open, and then you read the thumbnail, and you then call close. Where if you're reading out of the database, you've already opened the database. You only have to read. And it turns out the overhead of calling open is much greater than the overhead of the SQL part. You see, so people think, oh, SQL, that's, you know, that's adding a lot of overhead to my system. Actually, the overhead that it adds is less than an open system call. It's very fast. The other thing about SQLite is that it's absolutely, completely free. It's not GPL, it's not Berkeley license, it's not MIT license, it's not an Apache license, it's public domain. You can do anything you want with the code, rename it, change it around, do whatever you want. There are no restrictions, no attribution requirements. So, um, yeah, so SQLite is not the perfect solution for everything. I mean, there's, here's a, if, you, if you've got a storage problem, you're working on an application, and you need to know what, you're trying to figure out what database to use, here is your decision matrix on figuring out what database you want to use. Number one, is your data remote from the application? Is, do you have to go across a network link from your application to get to the data? If you're going to do that, go ahead and use a traditional client server database. Now, SQLite, remember, reads directly from the file system. If, um, and so you can do it on, if it's remote by doing a network file system. The, but the performance characteristics of a network file system are such that you might be disappointed with the result. It will work, but it won't be the fastest. Are you using big data? Remember that SQLite stores a complete database in a single file on disk. So if your data is too large to fit in a single file, you should maybe consider a different solution. Are you doing lots of concurrent writers? Now, SQLite can have multiple applications talking to the same database at the same time, reading and writing. But the writers have to take turns. Only one person can be writing at a time. So you know, on a cell phone, that's not really an issue. How many people are updating the context database on your cell phone at one point? You know, it's, it's not really, or, or, in your, or in your web browser, where you're storing bookmarks in a database, how many people are adding bookmarks to your database at one time? So the other thing uh, you consider is how many transactions per second are you doing? If, you're doing? if you've got an online transaction processing, system, processing problem, use an online transaction processing system. We've seen, database, we've seen SQLite used in real-world applications at about 1,000 transactions per second. But beyond that, use, use, a, um, use a database that's really designed to do a lot of transactions. So these are all very important problems. They're very big problems, and they deserve your attention. But there's so many, many, many storage problems that don't have any of these constraints. And for all those others, just use SQLi. Now, the way people mess this decision up is they get down to the bottom and they think, oh, I don't need a client server database engine, so I'll just um, open a file or a bunch of files on disk and I'll write my own stuff into these files. Like, maybe I'll store a bunch of JSON, or, heaven forbid, XML. And, 
And that doesn't work out well because when you do that, one, you've suddenly created your own file format that you've got to support from now on. You've got to debug it. You, you've lost all transaction support. You don't have a query language. You don't have a portable file format anymore. Um, you don't have access using third-party tools. And you're going to have to maintain this for a long time. So that's, that's, that's a problem. Just use SQLi. Open the database. Put your stuff there, and it's going to work out better for you. Now, I've got one more point that I want to make before I, I conclude here. And so on the screen here, this is a chart of the stock price of Apple Computer from when, from their initial IPO in 1981 through 2011. And I, I stopped at 2011 because it goes way on up from there. And if I'd included recent data, uh, you wouldn't be able to see the, the, the line historically because it would be just down to nothing. So that's why I cut it off when I did. And you'll notice that what happened at Apple is that uh, this is the stock, this is the split adjusted price. That for 20 years, they were like almost a penny stock. You know, the, the, the cost was one or two dollars per share for 20 years. And then suddenly, it's that little black dot. You see the black dot? It's like they took off and, and they increased in value two orders of magnitude beginning with that black dot. Okay, it's a hockey stick graph. Okay. This is 100% true. I'm not making this up. Apple introduced SQLite to the body. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So in conclusion, I want to say, look, SQLite is um, uh, it, it, it's fast, it's efficient, it's ultra-reliable, it solves so many problems, it's so easy to use. You know what? And it might just make you rich. So why don't you use it more? Thank you so much. I'm going to be over here all week. And so stop me in the hall if you have any questions. Thanks a lot and enjoy the time.